you, you won your tonight, tonight, but you definitely lost a belt. I lost a belt. I'm so happy that you lost a belt. <laughs> Who ain't need no glass, it's huh? Not, it's not tequila cam. She ain't need no glass. Come on, motherfucker. Another fucking dangerous ass mango juice that's fucking trying to kill my ass. It's a silent assassination. Alright. Oh, hey, hey, they forgot my fucking Chick-fil-A sauce. Duh! No, they didn't, though. It's right here. Polynesian. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. It smells very vinegary. Mmm. That bite was like an eight. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Some nice little tendies there. Mm. Look at that dip. Mmm. Mmm. Do a little polyethylene. I didn't get. You gotta be fucking kidding me, that's good. Oh, hey, mambo. Hey, da 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 hey, mambo. Bullshit. We have here is a Arnold Palmer. Chick fil A done did it again. I give my whole meal a 9.1 out of 10. Wait, whoa, 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 wait. Wait, <clears throat> Wait, oh yeah, okay, I thought I was about to fart, but I think this is shit. This isn't a mukbang video. <laughs> so dumb. Click on my video, today's video is a Blu-ray 4K update where I'll be showing you everything I picked up in the last couple weeks. So uh, let's get into it, shall we? Alrighty, very quickly I'm gonna show off some, some stuff that isn't Blu-rays or 4Ks. It's a couple DVDs and a game, actually. First, I'm gonna show the video game. That is uh, Zelda and the Twilight Princess. Let's get a good angle here. Yeah, I haven't actually played any of the Zelda games. I know I'm missing out, but um, I used to have a Wii. I don't anymore, but whenever you find these Zelda or Mario games, you just gotta pick them up no matter what they are. I mean, if they're cheap, you gotta pick them up because even if you don't play them, they're worth some money. So uh, definitely worth picking up for $3. Um, next off, we have the full cock. I mean, the full Monty. Uh, next off, we have the boy named... Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> fuck. The earlier Peanuts classics. I've never seen it, actually. Um, so definitely more penis than I can handle. I'll be... <laughs> next off, we have Phenomena. Um, I actually have not seen this all the way through, but it's Jennifer Connelly and Dario Argento. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Next off, we got Elvira's Haunted Boobs. I mean, tits. I mean, fuck. I mean, come on. Come on! Uh, yeah, she's hot. We're getting into the Blu-rays, and we're actually starting off really fucking strong. Um, most of the Blu-rays I have are boutique releases or special editions or just really cool stuff. Um, I've been trying only to collect cool editions of movies just because if I'm going to have a huge collection, I want everything to be nice. You know, it's like... Why collect if you don't do it with style, you know? So I almost busted a nut when I fucking found this. I was like, oh! I cannot express how excited I was to find this. I found this at Silver Platters. I walked in, and usually it takes me like an hour to find anything in there, because everything is usually very overpriced. They get everything brand new, and they slap $10 more on everything. Like, So usually I don't have high expectations going in there, but when I went in there this time, I walked in and they had a bunch of new stuff because I guess this guy donated his whole collection, which was filled with Criterion's, Aero Video, Scream Factory, all of the whole kit and caboodle. I instantly saw this, which is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the Aero with the slipcover in minty condition. I mean, you could eat a steak off of this thing. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't want to because you'd fuck it up. But so fucking happy to find this and the price was right. This was technically used, and I think their policy is if they get used stuff, they can't sell it for, you know, whatever they want. I think they have to sell it for a certain price because it's used, or maybe because they got so much in stock from this guy that they couldn't really price everything accurately because they just had to get it on the shelves. 
but I got this for $18.99, which I'm pretty sure when I looked this up, I saw it went from anywhere between $150 to $250. Now, I'm sure there's some people in the in the comments there and be like, um, well, that's only technically speaking, it's actually or I know it's worth more than $20. So now, I'm not gonna sell it. This is one of my favorite uh, B classic horror films. Um, yeah, I mean, this has such a huge cult following as deserved. I mean, just the moment the theme song comes on, I get happy every time. Next off, we have another Arrow video. I found this in the same uh, pile, basically, uh, from the same guy's collection, and that is Alice Sweet Alice. I'm not really sure what this one goes for, but again, I'm not selling any of these. I just like to kind of point out how much they're worth just for, you know, just for perspective. I'm not like, I, I don't buy to sell. I buy to keep or collect or for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, Alice Sweet Alice. I've heard really good things about this one. Um, I know it's a 80s slasher with Brooke Shields. I'm pretty sure she's the killer. I have no clue. I honestly don't really know anything about this movie other than what I just said. So really excited to watch that. We have a movie that I can't believe came out so long ago. That is Nocturnal Animals. Um, I still feel like this only came out like two years ago, but I guess this was 2017. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Great cast, and it's such an unusual film because it's mixed with so many different genres, and uh, it's 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 really good. It's 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 like a mystery. It's like a western at times. It's it's a little bit of everything, and and you got that really weird, bizarre opening that sets the tone. It's very Lynchian, um, and and honestly, I haven't seen this in so long that I can't really give you a full review of what I think about it. But I remember being really struck by it, and um, and just how unique. And different it was so really excited to watch that next up we have secondhand lions aka your grandma's favorite movie this is the ultimate old people movie i i know that sounds like a fucked up stereotype but you can't tell me that you don't see this playing at a retirement home daily um no i remember really enjoying this movie actually funny enough watched this at my aunt's house when i was a kid and i think that's maybe why i subconsciously think that yeah i mean i really i remember really enjoying this i mean when you put robert duvall and michael caine in a movie it's it's at least going to be entertaining and it, it's sentimental i remember it being cheesy but i also remember it being heartwarming and i can't wait to watch it again we have a criterion from the same collection that this guy donated and that is sex lies and videotape also got this for only like 19 dollars Love this movie. This is one of the best independent films ever made. You can tell Steven Soderbergh just had so much passion put into it. And really, at the end of the day, it's just a couple of actors, a director, a great script, and a camera. And he made a movie. I mean, it's just, like, I know there's more to it than that, but that's what it feels like at the end of the day when you watch this movie. It's just so personal, so many different meanings to it. And, uh, yeah, so definitely one I could talk about for a while. Life of Brian, uh, I would say... One of their best. I, I definitely like parts of this more than others. I think The Holy Grail is the only one that I like in, in, in entirety. Because, I mean, most of their movies are very hit or miss in segments because it's kind of like watching a sketch comedy show. It's like some sketches hit and some don't. Holy Grail, I think the whole movie hits. I love that movie. This one, on the other hand, I like a good percentage of it. There's some moments that I think drag and there's some jokes that I think are a little dated. But at the same time... Um, it's still really charming and I mean you got the Monty Python cast so it's it's a lot of fun next off We have one of my personal favorites that is Conan the Barbarian um, <clears throat> Is uh, what does he say he's like cross your enemies see them driven before you and the Recommendation of the woman or whatever the fuck he says that I, I can never remember that last part I remember the first two parts, but uh, yeah um, the lamentation of the women or something like that, but uh yeah, you gotta love Arnold in this. Uh, he actually intentionally wasn't giving a lot of speaking lines because this was kind of one of his first like commercial movies, and they were kind of they were afraid that his voice would turn audiences off. So they actually had him speak as little as possible. But I mean, that didn't do anything because he's still like, ah, yeah, ah, like <laughs> so. I think uh, people instantly fell in love with his voice. I know I did. Coraline, one of the greatest animated films of all time. And if you really want to get your kids into horror, this is a good stepping stone. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde um, with Frederick March and with Spencer Tracy, both incredible films. Um, I have to give the hat off to Frederick March's a little bit more than Spencer Tracy because not only do I think it's a little bit more quality, but it came out like 10 years before. 
and uses technical elements that are so much more ahead of its time. Like it's got POV shots, it's got so many different like transition effects that like that, that are so seamless that I don't that you cannot see the camera change. Like it, it it just looks like he's just turning into Hyde right in front of you. And the fact that they did that 92 years ago better than most effects today is just incredible. And then the Spencer Tracy one is really, really good too. And it was actually the first serious one I saw because when I was a kid, there's this, uh, there's a remake, not a remake, sorry. There's a parody called Jekyll and Hyde Together Again, which I believe is the most underrated comedy of all time. If you've not seen that, check it out. It's amazing. It's got Mark Blankfield in it. But I remember as a kid, I was in love with the story from that movie, and I watched this one, and then not until recently watched this one. So the love for this story keeps on going, and I can't wait to watch more and more renditions, including Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde, which I'm sure is gonna be awful, but I have to watch it. Next off, we have the Silent Night, Deadly Night collection, which includes three, four, and five. I've heard really good things about five, uh, you know, for what it is. I'm, I'm not saying people said it was like Oscar worthy or anything, but, uh, People said it was the most fun out of the, the last three. And uh, I mean, just from the title, The Toy Maker, and then Initiation and Better Watch Out. I mean, Toy Maker sounds like the most fun. I mean, who doesn't like toys? Next off, we have Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Uh, really happy to find this on Blu-ray with the slipcover. Even though I don't really like this simplistic DreamWorks thing that they're doing where they just have the characters on the front like that. I will say this one's a little bit cooler than the other ones, but Still, I at least wish they had the original cover like under it or something. I don't know, but uh, love Wallace and Gromit. Grew up with them. Uh, my, me and my dad's ritual as a kid is we'd eat cheese and crackers and watch Wallace and Gromit. You know, when we weren't watching RoboCop and Aliens and Predator, he, we were watching a couple family movies too, you know, to, to even it out. <laughs> have uh, what people think I have, brain damage. Um, I've only seen this once, so it's a little blurry, but I remember having a lot of fun with it. The, the effects are very well done. It's kind of like, you know, Reanimator in the sense that it's low budget and they take that to its advantage. And, you know, they utilize it to the point where, you know, it's intentionally comedic so it can make the, like, you know, maybe not so good effects look better because they put it in a comedic context. Uh, but there is a really, really cool scene in this movie that involves a blowjob. And that's all I'm gonna say, but it's, it is it is a lot of fun. It's Paranorman, uh, Steelbook, let's see if we can get a, a better focus there. Um, yeah, so we got Paranorman, Steelbook. I don't like this one as much as Coraline. I think the Steelbook is actually a little bit cooler, but movie-wise, I, uh, of course, gotta give it to Coraline. I mean, it's just hard to beat. But Paranorman, I will say, is the best out of the, I guess, say, Laka, or whatever the fuck they call it on that line. But this is definitely better than the Box Trolls, Missing Link, Kuba and the Fuck Tard. I don't know. Those movies suck, in my opinion. This, this was the end of, of that line for me. Um, yeah, Coraline and Paranorman. You need to stop after those two. Next off, we have Terrifier 2. Um, what can I say about this movie that people haven't already puked over? Uh, yeah, this movie's a lot of fun. It's twisted. It's dark. It's heartless. It, I mean, it, it actually, that's the thing I like about it is it's so fucking twisted and in, in, in just pure black. But, but at the same time, which is different from the first one, because the first one is just dark. The second one, I have to say, actually does have a little bit of heart to it. Because at least this one introduced the hero versus villain factor, which I think made the movie tons better. And the fact that it actually has some thoughtful humor to it as well. Like there's actually some Charlie Chaplin type humor. There's some, um, you know, there's some over the top violence that's that's really funny at times. Uh, I don't know, I just thought there was a lot more uh, quality to this one. And um, a lot of things that brought a contrast to all the bloody violence and things that might go too far for some people, which it even went too far for me a couple times. But like I said, I just think it was just such a fun ride. And if you just think of these movies as an experience more than a film, they're a lot more, they're a lot more entertaining. Next off, we have uh, Back to the Beach with, uh, I almost said Donny Osmond, with uh, Frankie Avalon and Annette, fun 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 uh, Annette Funicello. Yeah, I mean, come on, let's be honest, I mainly got this because of Pee Wee Herman. All right, next off, we have 
Pennywise, the story of it. I have actually never seen this, but I've heard great things about it. It was a documentary from last year, I believe. And what's really cool about it is I believe it has new interviews with Tim Curry post stroke. So that that's also a really interesting aspect to it. Um, yeah, can't wait to watch it. And this also has a really, really cool artwork. So really happy to get that one. Next off, we have Bruce Stern and Silent Running. Um, I have not finished this yet. I actually watched uh, quite a bit of it, but I didn't get to watch the ending, so I can't give a full opinion on it. If we have some that I found at Goodwill for really cheap, like each of these go for at least $20 a piece. And, and I was like, even if I don't like some of these, I can just sell the ones I don't like and keep the ones I do like. Like I said, I don't usually buy to sell, but if it's something that I don't really like and it's worth money, I might as well get the money that I like and not keep the movie I don't like. So next off we have from that we have Ben, which I know I will enjoy this. I love Willard and I know I'll enjoy it at least. Uh, next off we have Frightmare, which I have never even really heard of, but it looks like some 80s fun. Um, next off we have another one I've never heard of uh, is uh, Death Promise. And these are both, I believe, these are Vinegar Syndrome uh, releases. So I was like, I had to pick them up. Even if I don't like them, I had to pick them up. Uh, yeah, Death Promise, that actually looks like a lot of fun. I love that artwork there. Um, cheap is this one looks awful. I almost didn't buy this one. The Theater Bazaar. This one looks pretty bad too, I'm not gonna lie. But I had to get it because it also has Seth Green in it, and that is the Attic Expeditions. Yeah. I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> hey, it's got Jeffrey Combs in it too. Okay. Yay. All right, next off, we got Cruella. This actually came in a red case. I found it at a thrift store and I just swapped out the red case for another movie. I mainly got it for that red case. I, I thought this movie was fine. Um, you know, it's basically Devil Wears Prada with a different title. Uh, it's all right. Like, I, I don't mind having it in my collection, but like I said, I mainly got it for the red case. Um, next off, we got Friday. Uh, a fun movie. I definitely mainly like it for Chris Tucker. You got knocked the fuck out! Ended it off with two Criterions. Arsenic and Old Lace, which is such an underrated comedy. Um, I mean, it's highly rated in the community, the film community, but I think this is one that everybody should talk about and should be a Halloween tradition for, for everyone, honestly. Cary Grant is just genius. His physical comedy, his facial expressions. Um, Raymond Massey as the Boris Karloff type character. Peter Lorre. I mean, there's so many nods to classic horror in such a light, stage play comedic take and it's just it's it's hilarious and um the the women that play his aunts too are just so delightful it's a it's a great movie and i highly recommend it and then next off last but not least we have cure um this is has to be one of the darkest movies i've ever seen uh and i don't mean like it's it's hard to watch or like not like terrifier 2 where you know it's just like torture porn half the time like no like this actually knows when to hold back with the gore, but it just has such a haunting story that will keep you up all night. Um, and I, I don't even want to say anything about the story because I don't want to spoil anything. But all I'll say is it's one of those kind of movies where a detective gets a little too deep into his case. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. All right, guys, thank you for watching. That brings my video to an end. Uh, hopefully you guys liked everything I picked up and hopefully I didn't take too long with each title or didn't go too fast with some. Um, if you do have questions um, about anything, let me know in the comments, or if there's a favorite that I picked up of yours, or if there's a favorite of yours that I picked up, let me know as well. But anyway, guys, that leaves it, and I'll see you next time.